What's going on? Back again for Quarantine Marketing Part 2 so that we can talk about how you can keep winning while you're locked in your house with your kids and your animals and all this stuff that you're not used to on a daily basis. You're used to having adult time and being able to be at the office and be focused. So we're going to talk about what can you do while you're locked in your house so that you can keep winning if you're on quarantine, right? We're not on quarantine yet but we're getting close. Uh, They've asked us to stay local, but they haven't put us officially on a quarantine yet. So let's talk about what you can do. If you didn't catch the video yesterday, once I'm done with this video, I will, um, I'll link the video in the comments. Also tell me if the audio sounds good. I'm using this fancy, uh, I'm using this fancy lapel mic today. I can show you guys the equipment later, but it's basically this uh, Samson setup. So I'm hoping that, uh, it looks like everything is good though. So let me know if it sounds if it's sounding pretty good. And the board is backwards. I don't know how to I don't know how to change it. Uh, somebody told me that there's a way to change it, but I don't know how I can write normally and see your comments at the same time. What's up Chase? What's up Sohail? Appreciate you guys for tuning on. Um okay. So like I said, if you didn't catch the video yesterday, go watch that video. It's going to have part um, three, the first three pieces, one, two, and three. So just in case you didn't see it, basically number one is connection. Number two is attention. And number three is entertainment, right? So people are going to be craving, craving connection. People are, you're going to have more attention because people are going to be on social media a little bit more than they're normally on here. And also obviously people are here ultimately for entertainment. Um, and you want to be a part of that, right? Is how can you be a part of the entertainment and not just be the commercials all the time, right? You can't, you can't just be on here pitching your business every single day. You can, as long as you create enough other content, right? So if you're making four, five, six posts a day, you can definitely talk about your business every single day. But you know, you, you got to be. You first off, you got to be here. Okay. So how can we? Um, so we're going to continue this right now. Okay. So number one, or really number four for today, is man. I want to write this on. I'm going to write it up here, but I know it's going to be backwards. By the way, leave a comment. Leave a comment. Let me know if you're on here live or if you're catching the replay. Ask a question. I'm going to pick somebody to win the book pack. This is the loan officer strategy guide. This is the nine figure blueprint. And somebody's going to win um, win both of these today, just like somebody won it yesterday as well. So again, I would love if somebody could tell me if the audio sounds super amazing or if it just sounds normal. Like, is the audio coming through my phone or is the audio coming through this great mic setup that I've got that I'm hoping is actually coming through so that as I'm turning and doing stuff, the audio still sounds super epic, right? So, but you just never know with technology how it how it's going. What's up, Josh? Appreciate you for tuning in live. Thanks, Robert. Okay, so let's get into it. So number four, I will try to write it backwards, but you can see I wrote this backwards right here. So you you should be seeing it re- normally, but you know I wrote that backwards. So in case you're like, man, he, Nick writes like a five-year-old, it's because I wrote it backwards. <laughs> so, all right, cool. All right, number four. So I'm just going to write it regularly. You guys can just guess it, you know. But number four is omnipresent, okay? So how can you get omnipresent, okay? How can you be able to do this with the people that – you want to stay in contact with. You know, right now you're going to see a lot of people pulling back on their marketing budgets and this kind of thing, but maybe the people that really press forward are going to be the people that actually really truly win, right? You're going to be able to take more ground right now by pressing forward. And so I'm not going to suggest you go out and, you know, be spending a gazillion dollars to promote yourself to people that don't necessarily know you. But what I'm going to talk about today is how can you be omnipresent with people who already know you, right? People that already know I can trust you on some level, how can you maintain, or if you don't have it today, how can you create being omnipresent for that audience? Okay. So there's really two pieces within being omnipresent, right? Number one is you have the organic side and then number two, you have the paid side. Okay. So on the organic side, um, so again, you just have to bear with me on the backwards, uh, on the backwards writing. I'm going to figure out maybe, I don't know. I just don't see a way to be able to, I just don't see a way to be able to like flip this and see your comments and stuff at the same time. So what's up, Jerry? What's up, Isaiah? Appreciate you guys for tuning on. So 
Number one, if you want to create omnipresence on the organic side, it's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is just be present on a daily basis. Okay, Facebook rewards accounts that they consider to be active. Okay, so what does Facebook consider active? It's at least one post per day. Okay, so an active profile is making at least one post per day. So it doesn't mean that you're coming to Facebook and you're liking and commenting and engaging with other people. It means that you're actually posting on your profile. And the reason that you want to do this is because as people are coming to Facebook, whether it's, you know, Facebook is always deciding how to show people which posts to show them, right? Facebook calls it edge rank. There's three pieces to edge rank. There's um, basically, you know, how close is the relationship? How important is the post that you made? And how long has it been since the post was made? And since, um, and since people were engaging it, commenting, liking it, and that kind of stuff. So if you're creating content every single day on Facebook, if you're making posts on your personal profile every day, you're gonna have more chance of being present when people are going looking through the newsfeed. Now, in a perfect world, you're making even more than one post per day, right? Maybe you're making two to three, four posts per day. If you're actively working Facebook, you know, and want to be present here and you're using it as a business tool, right? I mean, if you're just trying to keep up with your friends and family on Facebook, you probably don't have to post four or five times a day, right? But if you're trying to use it from a business standpoint, keeping in mind that the business is the commercials and all the other stuff is the entertainment is the really the value, why people are connected with you, then, you know, you need to be making more content. The more content you create, the more often you have a chance to pitch a commercial, right? Or insert a commercial. So on the organic side, it's basically all you need to do is be present, right? Let me ask you this, drop a comment right now and let me know on average, how many Facebook posts are you making on your personal profile on a daily basis? Okay. So leave me a comment and let me know what, what you have going on right now, what that normally looks like. What's up mom. What's up Luca. Appreciate y'all for watching. Um, so there, on the organic side, if you need to be present and you want to be present on Facebook and you want to have people, when they're coming over, they're seeing you and you're part of the conversation, then you need to be making posts, right? If you're only kind of a lurker and you're only engaging with other people's posts and other people's um, content, then you're not, really, you're not really adding to the conversation necessarily, right? You're not creating any of your own conversations. And all that stuff is great. You definitely should be engaging with other people. You definitely should be, um, you know, commenting and liking and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. But, it, but ultimately, what are you adding to the conversation, right? Where are you creating conversation within your own profile? Think about the fact that your profile is always trending up or down, right? These videos, I'm assuming my profile will trend upwards a little bit, right? The video yesterday got almost 500 views. Hopefully you guys will love this one and share it out with your friends. And maybe we'll get even more, right? It'll trend my profile upwards because I'm making content that people are engaging in, people are watching the content. So you gotta think about that too. Are you creating content that people are engaging on your profile? And that can be videos like this, like we talked about yesterday. That, that can be, you know, all, um, sorry, that can be like text posts, that can be photos. You got all, you know, a lot of different options, right? But on the organic side, you have to be present. Okay. Here's a really simple exercise that you can do if you, um, if you need to figure out what to talk about. So let me know, drop me in the comments right now if, if it would be helpful if I share with you real quick how to create six different things that you can always talk about on Facebook. Because I hear from people often that the, one of the challenges is that they don't know what to talk about, right? They don't know what to say. So just let me know real quick in the comments if you have that challenge I'm going to share with you a real quick exercise that you can take yourself through and you can literally solve that challenge forever. You'll never again say, I don't know what to talk about on Facebook. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Okay. We're going to create six boxes. So you can do this on a piece of paper, real simple. Okay. Just get out a blank piece of paper and put, create six boxes on that paper. Okay. Because, and we're going to solve that right now. Yeah, Chas, exactly. And what's up, Alex? Appreciate you. So what you're going to do is, um, is we're going to create this six, this six boxes on a piece of paper. Okay. And now on, on this line here, right here, you're going to be, you're going to write the word for F O R. And on this line down here, you're going to write the word as. Okay. And so basically we have three boxes for the four and three boxes for the as. Okay. Now what you do is 
with this right here, essentially what we're going to create is three things that you want to be known for and three things that you want to be known as. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in some examples again. Totally understand this is backwards, but hopefully the visual will help you um, will help you gather this. And uh, what's up, Nathan? What's up, Zach? Yeah, so you're going to dig this. All right. So so what, what are things that you could want to be known for? And I would love you guys feel free. Jump in the comments. Let me know some examples of things that you want to be known for things that you want to be known as. Okay. So for example, I want to be known as a family man. Okay. So I, don't, I want people to see that I'm doing stuff with my wife, with my son, with my family, you know, that family is important to me. I want to be known as that, right? I want to be known as a family man. Okay. I want to be known for my Nerf collection. All right. So I want to be known like for being a Nerf enthusiast for my Nerf collection. Okay. So that could be one example of that. Okay. I want to be known. Um, I want to be known for my barbecue skills. Okay. Maybe you guys like to cook. Maybe you like to throw some steaks down on the grill. Maybe you like to, you know, make, maybe you're Italian. You like to make homemade gravy, right? This kind of thing. And that's could be a, a part of your personality that like in real life, people know that about you. They know that man, Mike throws down the gravy, right? But maybe on Facebook, nobody knows that about you because it's not something that you talk about, okay? So like your barbecue skills, okay? I want to be known as a marketer, okay? Or as like a thought leader, right? Is whatever you want to put here, right? So I can be making sure that that's coming out of my stuff. I, you know, um, I want to be known for, um, you know, let's see, what else? I want to be known for, uh, like, yeah, I would say like, I want to be known as a cannabis user, Okay, for example, right? I don't, you know, like I intentionally put that out to make myself different from, you know, other people are obviously, you know, using cannabis. I don't have tons of barbecue. I mean, I'm decent on the grill, but mostly with like steaks and, you know, that kind of stuff, right? But I definitely like to throw it out. Okay, I want to be known for, um, I want to be known for generating uh, cheap leads, generating leads, right? Uh, generating leads and growth, okay? So that people could know that about me, right? So these are just some examples, and you can create your own your own six part thing, right? Yeah, I know I'm writing backwards again, man. I don't. It's, it's the only way that I can see your comments and see that you're telling me that I'm writing backwards, and be able to write on the board. So you just have to take it for what it is, right? But this this process right here is pretty simple, okay? Six blocks on a blank piece of paper. Write four and as next to the three blocks, and fill those things in, right? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known as, okay? Obviously, that can't all be mortgage related. It can't all be church related or whatever, right? This is how you can create different personalities and kind of think about that, right? If you need help, ask people around you. What do you, you know, what do they know you as? What do they know you for? Okay, that's going to help you to on the organic side to always have content. Okay, if you want to be present and you want Facebook to consider your profile to be active, you need to be making at least one post per day. All right, so having the six things the known for known as it's going to help you to have that content you know to know what you can talk about so that way you can't if you're on facebook or you're thinking like man i really need to i remember nick said we need to make a post once per day i don't know what to talk about go to your little cheat sheet look through what you've talked about recently talk about one of the other pieces right so if you've been talking a lot about mortgages and the market and all this kind of stuff maybe you need to post a picture with your family or your dog or a funny video, right? Of you guys nerfing, or maybe you go live while you're cooking your steaks and you talk about real estate questions, mortgage questions while you're grilling your steaks, right? Now you're now you're combining those different pieces, right? Watch the video in a mirror and it's not backwards. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's the hustle right there. So, you know, you want to you need to have those different aspects, right? You're probably awesome in real life, but maybe online it's not translating, okay? So being omnipresent is going to help right now, especially like we've talked about. Everybody's looking on social media more often today than, you know, maybe is normal during the workday because they're used to being at work and that kind of thing. Yeah, right. Ask people around you what they know you for, what they know you as. And, and it, interestingly, is see if that matches with what you want to be known for and known as. The good news is that we're like our own paparazzi and we get to decide what is being said about us on social media, right? So... If we're deciding that, that, that's awesome because now we can make sure that we're bringing out those qualities that we want people to know about us, okay? And you can, like I said, it, you can, it's almost like a math thing where you can at least have some equation or like have a cheat sheet to go back to 
and use that, okay? So that's how you can be omnipresent on the organic side. Now, how can you be omnipresent on the paid side, okay? If you wanna be always around also, whenever on an iPhone you can reverse the picture. I don't know, is there really a way to do that? Let's see. Yeah, I don't know, I don't wanna start hitting the buttons, but I'm just not sure. I see like turn on the flash, change the camera. Yeah, who knows, okay? So now let's talk about being omnipresent on the paid side. Real simple process that I have, okay? I call it the Cerberus guard dog method, okay? Cerberus, if you don't know who Cerberus was, he was Hades' pet, right? He guarded the gates of hell. And when somebody would be banished to hell, or maybe today still, who knows, right? Somebody's banished to hell, Cerberus is there to make sure they can never escape, okay? Now, the reason that I like using Cerberus as a method is because um, once people get caught into this process, once people show interest in what you're doing, they've already demonstrated that they know, like, and trust you on some level, then now we can always stay in front of them, okay? So first thing that you have to do if you want to put Cerberus in place, and maybe it'd be awesome if like one of you guys could write down the five audiences in the comments as I talk about it, because obviously it'll probably be backwards on this. So five audiences that you're going to want to create, okay? So I'll just call them A, B, C, whatever like this, okay? And then again, hopefully somebody can take these and drop them in the comments so that everybody will, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so basically, what are these audiences that you need to create? Number one, it should be your database. So we all have a database of people that already know you on some level, right? Whether it's past clients, friends, families, referral partners, past leads, this kind of stuff, okay? So number one is you want to take that database and we're going to make an audience from that. now. What I'm talking about right now is basically creating these audiences inside of a Facebook ads manager, okay? So that these are gonna be audiences that we're building for Facebook and for Instagram so that we can be able to stay in front of people when they're in, that, in those spaces, okay? So create one for your database. It's real simple. You go into the ads manager. You can probably even Google like Facebook custom audiences. And if you're not 100% sure how to do it, you know, and you can see how to do it there. And you can upload your database into Facebook as an audience so that People who already know I can trust you, now they're gonna be an audience that we can run ads to specifically, we can choose them, okay? Number two is video views. So if you're running videos on Facebook and on your business page specifically, where the video is being uploaded to the business page, not to your personal profile, Facebook is tracking all those views, right? So they know exactly who's seen the video and how much of the video they've seen. So you can create audiences based off of people that watched as little as three seconds of the video and as much as 95% of the video, okay? So you can make that audience right there. Number two is um, engagement. So you can make it for people who engage with your pages and uh, appreciate you, Chess, for writing the things down there. So anybody who's engaged with your page, right? If you're running ads or you're putting content on your, on your um, business page, now anybody who has liked, commented, shared, clicked anything around on your page, now they're gonna be caught in this engagement audience, okay? The next one is gonna be form fills, okay? So this one here is, um, if, is only gonna really be applicable if you're running Facebook ads, right? So if you're running Facebook ads and you're running them specifically using the Facebook lead forms that they have built in, then Facebook is tracking all that information, right? They know who has clicked the form, they know who has opened the form, they know who's submitted the form, who hasn't submitted the form, and all that data is available inside of custom audiences. You can't see it, you can just create the audiences knowing that Facebook is putting the right people in there, okay? Um, so, so number one, you wanna have your database, you wanna have people who are watching your videos, people who are engaging with your page, people who filled out your forms, and then the last one is you can have your website, so your website traffic, right? So Facebook gives you a pixel. If you don't have that on your website, you're doing yourself a disservice. So you need to have the Facebook pixel on your website. It's pretty simple to do. You put in the header. If you're not familiar, find yourself like a, some kind of a geek and you know, they can help you out, right? Um, and now you can have everybody who's visited your website, now they can all be tracked into this, these audiences as well. So these five audiences, drop me a comment by the way. Drop me a comment if you have these audiences built out or if this would be a new concept for you to create, to keep yourself in front of people, right? But these five audiences right here, okay, once you create these audiences, some of them are gonna continually build themselves 
and some of them you're going to have to update occasionally, right? Like obviously the database, you're going to have to update that one. Video views, you just have to add in the new videos that you upload on your page, but otherwise it's going to continue to build that audience for you. Engagement is going to continue to build, sorry. Form fills, those you have to add the new forms, but otherwise it's going to continue to build. And then your website is just going to continue to build automatically, okay? Now, what are we going to actually show these people? It's real easy. Okay, you're going to want to create three videos, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to, all these people over here, they're going to all go into one big audience and they're going to see three videos, okay? So these three videos right here, you're going to shoot them as one, about one minute videos, okay? Um, the reason, you definitely want them to be less than two minutes so that they'll show on Instagram and Facebook. If it's over two minutes, it'll only show on Facebook so you'll lose out on everybody that's on, on IG. And I think you, you know, you might as well be there as well, okay? So on these videos right here, it basically looks like this. Um, how, what, why, okay? And again, I know it's backwards, but I think y'all are pretty much getting it. What do you say, Alex? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, okay, so you're going to shoot three videos. How, what, why is your, is your focus? So what video number one is how you do what you do, right? So... That could be, let, let's, start with, let's start with the what video, for example, or I like to start with the why video, all right? So if you look at the why video, it's like, why are you a loan officer? Why are you a realtor? Why are you different, right? Why'd you get into this business? It's almost like telling your origin story in 60 seconds, right, or 90 seconds. Like, why did you decide to get into business, you know? Like today, if I was a loan officer, my origin story would be like, you know, when I was in the Air Force, I got, I got moved from Texas to um, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And when I got there, you know, I was thinking about where were we going to live and I was looking around at apartments and all this kind of stuff. And ultimately, I decided that I was going to build a house and we found a neighborhood and a builder owned the neighborhood and um, he referred us over to this local bank. And that's what I, who I used. I used this local bank in order to get my VA loan for the house. And what I found out about six months after we bought the house is that I actually got an artificially inflated rate. I could have gotten a way better deal if I would have went to a mortgage broker or somebody that was like actually looking out for veterans. And I want to make sure that never happens to another veteran. And that's the reason that I decided to become a mortgage broker today. And I make sure that I'm serving that community that they always get helped at the highest level. Um, so like that, right? You, can, you, need, you should have some sort of an origin story. How did you get into this business? Why are you doing this? Um, that kind of thing, okay? So that's what your why video is. Your what video is what you do, okay? So, um, you know, on the what video, it can be pretty simple. Like, hey, um, you've probably been hearing a ton of things happening going on in the market right now, and you wanna know, you know, what does this actually mean for you, right? What is this, how does this apply to your life? What does this mean for your specific situation? And um, if you want to know more about that, just click the link around here, book a 15 minute chat with me and let's, have, let's talk about exactly what's going on and how it affects, you know, where you're at in your specific situation. You know, because ultimately there's a lot of generic info out here and so, you know, you can be providing that one-on-one -on -one assistance, okay? Now, how you do it, that can either be a video of you getting on camera talking about how specifically you help people. So that can be around, um, you know, if you have some kind of special programs where you this kind of thing, you can also get a client to get on video and talk about how you help them, okay? So if you're out there trying to get more refinances or purchase, depending on what you're looking for, get a client to get on camera and talk about that kind of story, right? About the fact that you help them and how you help them. And that's, that's an amazing um, video to run as well where you don't have to be creating the content for that video. You can just leverage somebody else, somebody else's testimonial about you already. Because like I call it the Amazon effect. We're always looking for proof that somebody is good or a, a decision that we're going to make is we're looking for validation for that decision and having somebody getting on camera and talking about you, it's going to help to validate that decision that somebody is already thinking in their head that they want to work with you. And now it'll help, uh, you know, really cement that decision. Okay. So all you do, once you shoot these three videos, each one of these videos here, I'm gonna to try to do this backwards. Uh, that was pretty terrible. Uh, let's see. Each one of these videos is gonna have, uh, wow, that looks awful. 
Each one of these videos is gonna have $1 a day put on it as a budget, okay? So you're never gonna wear people out. That's the great thing about this. Literally, this process right here is $3 a day. You're never gonna wear people out. They're not gonna see your video a million times and you know get frustrated and start hiding you. They're only gonna see you a couple times a week. So if anything, it's just gonna keep you top of mind. It's gonna keep you relevant. Also, what this is gonna do is it's gonna make you a local celebrity, all right? You're gonna go to a restaurant. You're gonna go out, obviously not right this second, right? But as you start heading back out and doing things, when you're out and about, people are going to recognize you. Okay, people will recognize you from your um, from your videos, especially if you have some sort of consistent look, right? If you wear a hat or have some sort of kind of look to you, um, and even if you don't, you know, people will start to recognize your face because you're going to be present, you know, in their life and in their when they're looking on social media, you know, in their experience, you're going to always be present, right? You're going to always be relevant. All right. So this is omnipresent. This is strategy number four for why you're at your house. You know, ultimately, you, you know, this, this right here, what I just shared and this, you can knock that out. Create the audiences, shoot the videos, upload the videos to Facebook, create the, create the ads, you know, all of that kind of stuff um, you, can, you can do right away. And if you need help with that kind of stuff, if you're not sure how to do this or, you know, any of what I'm saying right now is French, you should check out oneagentaway.com and see exactly how we do this kind of stuff inside the Legion of Loan Officers and I'll be happy to help you out, you know, getting this set up in your own business, okay? All right, number five strategy. I'm only giving out three strategies today, okay? Four, five, and six. We'll come back tomorrow with some more, all right? And by the way, if you're catching the live right now, drop me a hashtag live, or if you're on the replay later, hashtag replay. Appreciate that. And ask a question. If you ask a great question, somebody's going to win the book pack, the Loan Officer Strategy Guide, and the nine-figure blueprint that uh, we wrote with Michael Mann, Okay. So number five strategy is getting reviews. Okay, let me see, what do you say, Luca? How did you set up the video ads? Three separate ads or one with three videos? I'm setting them up as three separate ads with three separate budgets, okay? It can be in the same campaign, but it has to be, um, it needs to be three separate ad sets. The reason that you wanna do that is because if you do it as a campaign budget or you put them all in the same ad set, Facebook will start to figure out which video is more popular and start to show that video and that's when it can get annoying, right? Because then people start seeing the same video like 100 times instead of three different videos 30 times, right? So it's just different. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's the best way to do it is you can have it in one campaign, but it needs to be three separate ad sets so that each one of them has a separate $1 budget attached to that. All right. So number five is getting reviews, okay? So basically... You know, I'm sure that you're already getting a lot of reviews. You know, if you're closing, let's just say, for example, if you're closing 10 loans per month, at minimum, you should be getting five, eight, 10, even more than 10 reviews online every single month. Because ultimately, you can get more than one review per person, right? You can get a video testimonial, you can get a written review. There's different things that you can get from each person. So, you know, you can, if you work it correctly, you can be even getting more than one review per person, right? Because you could get them to give you a video testimonial and then you could get them to leave you a written review online somewhere. So a lot of times, you know, people say, well, where do people leave reviews? Where's the most important places for people to do this, okay? So I'm gonna try to write this somewhat backwards so it will make sense for you guys. Let's see, three, wow, this is tough. I don't know if you guys write backwards, but man, that is really, well, not terrible, but it's pretty difficult. <laughs> okay, so where should you be getting reviews? Number one is obviously with Google, okay? So I'm just gonna put like, can I even write a G here? I don't know. Wow, okay, so Google, okay? That's the number one place to get reviews. Why? Is because it's still the Mac daddy, okay? When people leave reviews on Google, um, that is going to, um, it's gonna, it's gonna rank in the maps ranking. It's, it's the number one place that you wanna get reviews, okay? So when you're thinking about where do I wanna get my customers to leave reviews, you wanna get them on Google. Now, what I recommend is never to send out, like especially if you're sending some sort of blast, if you're like get inspired today and you're gonna go get a bunch of reviews, don't just blast out your links to your whole database because if they all go leave a review today, Google will take it down, okay? Google will assume that you did that, that you created that flood of reviews and they'll take them down okay um i saw it happen with another guy he got like 10 reviews in one day and literally like two days later all, all the reviews are gone except for only one only one out of 10 still stayed up there 
Google removed all the rest of them, um, assuming that it was you know done intentionally. So if you're doing this, you know be reaching out to people individually so that you can you know trickle the reviews in. If you're getting one review a day, one review every other day on Google, you know that kind of thing, then it's totally different than if you just slam them in with 10 or 15 or 20 reviews at the same time. So you know if you're if you're at the house, reach out to your past clients, especially if they have never left a review for you. Reach out to your past clients, and I'll even share with you what to say in just a second. Okay. So number two place that you can be getting reviews is is on Facebook, right? So Facebook, those reviews they show up on Google as well. They show up online if people are searching. Um, you need to get Facebook reviews. A lot of these places they won't start showing up on the reviews like um, in the search engine results until you have at least three reviews. Okay, so in general, you're going to need at least three reviews before. You know, if you look for different people online today, it'll have like the stars and stuff showing up on Google, and that's how you do that, right? Is you have at least three reviews, five stars, and now it'll start ranking. It'll start showing the stars with the three reviews next to it in, in Google. If you start, you know, if you go look for yourself in Google, for example, see what shows up. You know, and if you want some feedback on what's showing up, just uh, Google yourself. You know, take a screenshot, drop it in the comments, and I'll check it out after this video is over. Okay. Number four or number three place that you want to be getting reviews is on Yelp. Okay, so kind of backwards why there, but you get it. Um, with Yelp, again, it's it's a place that people who are Yelpers they're loyal to Yelp. They're going to go there. They're going to look for everything. Okay, um, Yelp has a ton of traffic. If you ever want to know how much traffic is actually people are looking for mortgage and real estate phrases in your market, you can call Yelp. They have a paid program. You don't need the paid program. You can get 100% of the value off of Yelp without the paid program. Um, but the reason that you can call them and talk to them is you can ask them how many searches are happening per month in my market and they'll tell you, you know, so you can have an idea. Is it worth, is it worth the effort there for you? Right? Um, okay. Number four place is obviously, you know, the big, you know, bad people on the block, right? Which I guess that's, that looks more like an S for you guys. Um, is, is basically realtor and zillow.com right so ultimately people are still going there and and so you want to you want to have a presence okay so if you can get people to be leaving reviews on zillow and realtor.com with zillow it's almost a hundred percent based on the amount of, rev of reviews so if you go look you'll notice that in your local market that they're all sorted by the amount of reviews so it's something that obviously depending on how much competition you have locally, you're gonna to have to put some time, energy, and effort into it, right? It's not gonna happen overnight. But these things right here, this is all about capturing ghost clients, right? So what's a ghost client? It's somebody that you don't even know is researching you and is interested in working with you. Because a ghost client is out there Googling, checking out stuff, verifying, doing their own research. And if they like what they see, then they message you, then they reach out to you, they call you. And if they don't like what they see, you never even know that they existed, right? And this is how you can be able to grab some of that extra free organic traffic that's out there on Google, that's out there looking around in your market, is to having these reviews online. So if you don't have a process to get these reviews, I'll just tell you my process really simply, right? It's make a phone call the night before you go to closing. You have to attend the closing. Make a call the night before and say, hey, super pumped about closing tomorrow. Let me ask you something, Philip. When, when we were starting this process, like what were you the most scared about? And they're gonna tell you what they were afraid of, right? I was afraid we wouldn't be able to qualify or I was afraid we'd end up living in the ghetto or whatever things, you know? And when they tell you that, you say, thank you so much for, for sharing that. You know, how, since we've been working together, how did I help you to overcome that? And they're gonna tell you how you helped them overcome that. And now what you've done is you've created a story that they can tell tomorrow at closing on video. Right, because what happens oftentimes is we whip out the camera and we scare them at closing and they're not ready. The woman has her hair in curlers or whatever. They don't even know what to say. And that's why they end up saying like, oh, Nick was awesome. He was excellent. He really helped us out a lot, right? And it's like this super generic um, review that means nothing. It has no meat and potatoes in it, you know? And it has, when somebody else watches it, it doesn't, it doesn't make them move. It doesn't, it doesn't have any emotions into it. So by helping them have a story now, you can say, hey, would you mind tomorrow after we do all the papers, if I would just set up my camera and you guys can, I can leave the room and you guys can record a quick video and just tell that story. The reason I ask you to do that is because I know there's other people out here that feel the exact same way you did. 
And if they see how we helped you, then maybe there's a chance we'll be able to help them too. Would, would that be okay with you? And almost 90 or to 100% of the time, people are going to say yes to that question because now you've told them what to say. They, you know, you've helped them create the story of what to say. And that's a lot of times when you look at, go look at your own reviews online. If you have online reviews, go look at them and see what people say. Oftentimes it's going to be like really surface level. It's kind of a junky review in general, right? Because it's just going to say, Oh, Cindy helped me a ton. Cindy was awesome. She was so great. I loved working with her. You should work with her too. I highly recommend Cindy. But it's like, what did she even do for you? How does she help you? What's her, what, what was her role in your, whatever you did with her, right? What was that client provider relationship like? I mean, there's literally no information about any of that, okay? So you can help them do that by having that simple, um, by doing those, you know, that simple phone call. Okay, now how you get these reviews? I do this about a week after closing. So ideally is around the time of closing, send them a pizza. If you know when your clients are moving into their house and you know, okay, on Thursday night, you know, Thursday they're moving into the house, call them up and tell them, hey, I'm gonna have some pizzas delivered to your house on Thursday. Would five o'clock be all right? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so shoot them some pizzas and then you can just send them an email a couple of days later and say, hey, I hope those pizzas were awesome. By the way, you know, online reviews are super important today and it would mean so much to me if you would leave a review on one of these sites and just tell people your story. Um, here are some key words that are really important because it'll help people find my find your review and find my profile. And man, it means so much that you would do this. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed the pizza. So what am I doing with that email right there, right? I'm reminding them in the beginning that I sent the pizza. So I'm trying to reenact that law of reciprocity, you know, because I've already given them pizza. I'm reminding them at the end it's pizza. Also in the middle, I'm only giving them about two or three links that I want them to leave reviews. So even though here I'm sharing four, if you share four or five, people won't be able to pick. They can't decide, right? So just give them two or three choices. They'll be able to pick one of those to leave a review. And ultimately you'll end up with a video testimonial and you'll end up with a written review online, okay? So you can focus on that today. Get this process in place. Like just know that how are you going to handle it? What can you do? What can you do this week to reach out to five past clients and get them to leave a review for you online while they're all hanging out of their house, right? Drop a, maybe you make a Facebook post and you say, hey, I know we're all stuck in the house. I'm trying to think what, what you could offer them right now, like some kind of delivery. Is there some sort of cheap delivery thing? Probably not, right? Or maybe you just give them a $5 Starbucks card. Hey, I've got $100 worth of Starbucks cards I'm going to be giving away today. Shoot me a PM if you want one. I just have one small favor to ask, right? And then they're going to shoot you a message. Hey, oh, what, you, what do you need me to do, man? I'd love to get a Starbucks card. Hey, will you do me a favor and just pick one of these three places and drop me a review, right? And just space that out over time so that you can be adding those into, your, into it. Okay, number six. Yeah, I'm, I was going to try to write that backwards, but I'm off on it. Number six is certainty, okay? So it's interesting that this word came up yesterday or on, I did, a, I did a virtual summit on Monday and this word came up in almost every single speaker that presented, all, all eight speakers, um, the word certainty came up at some point because right now there's a lot of uncertainty going on in the market and in the world and people are looking for somebody to have some certainty, okay, to help provide that to them. And you can be that person, okay? So how can you provide certainty? The number one way is, to not just share information, but it's to share information with your take on the information, right? So you see today that there's a lot of articles, there's a lot of information coming out around coronavirus, around the markets, around the Fed updates and all these kind of things. And everybody's trying to process that information, but we all are processing that information through our own filters, through our own frames of reference that we have through our lives. And we might not actually be taking in what's important to us because, you know, say for example, if you're a realtor or a loan officer, which I'm assuming is 90% of the people watching this right now, you know, you work in this industry every single day. You understand what the Fed means and what this means and that means. But for most people, they have literally have no idea, right? That's why everybody all of a sudden thought mortgage rates were zero. You could go get a free house loan, you know, because it's just not, it's not something that average people are dealing with. They're only dealing with this every five to seven years and you're dealing with it every single day, okay? So when you see information come out, instead of just simply sharing an article or sharing a sound bit from somebody else, 
you need to share that with your own input. Okay, so it needs to have some attachment with your reference points. You can create the frame of why this is important or what do we need to know out of this article or this information. You can help to create that reference point for your network. And also that's what's gonna make people stop and pay attention to what you're sharing because if you're just are sharing information, most people don't know is, is this relevant to me or not? And they're not gonna take the time to figure it out. So when you create some frame of reference, now people can actually see, okay, this is important to me. Let me go actually see this article, right? And ultimately, if you're sharing an article, isn't that the goal? Isn't that the goal is you, you must want people to read it if you decided to share it. So just take that little extra time and put your own spin on things, okay? You're seeing um, different organizations, you're seeing different organizations come out with sound bits today where you know, they're creating pieces of content that then other, their members are then disseminating out and ultimately, you, you can do the same thing for your network, right? You can be the content creator. You can be that point of information by taking in other information that's out there in the market, taking it all in, and then regurgitating it in a way that your network actually understands, right? And they can say, okay, that makes sense to me, right? Now, you don't necessarily want to have to say, does that make sense? But you just want to have in your head to say it in a way and break it down in such normal language and such normal words that you know that everybody's gonna understand why it's important or what you're trying to convey, right? So having some certainty today, people are definitely looking for that, right? There's a lot of uncertainty, and what you wanna do is you wanna help be the, the calm in the storm and help present that information in a way where people can, again, take it in and be able to understand exactly what it means without using um, any kind of lingo or acronyms or this kind of stuff where, where people in general, they don't, they don't understand exactly what you're trying to convey. They're like, okay, I think that was important. I kind of get it, but I don't know exactly what this phrase meant, right? What is, what is quantitative easing? Maybe somebody doesn't know what quantitative easing means, you know, or QE5 or seven or whatever the hell we're in right now, right? Maybe somebody doesn't know what that actually means and you can break it down and tell them in a way that makes sense. Now they can, be able to tell it to their friend and you know or they share your video right it's how you can you can get out there so you can be that voice of certainty today all right and 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 ultimately people are right now they're at home they're they're even more in tune with the news and with updates and finding out what's going on than they usually are because there are so many changes happening really fast and nobody's distracted by their office environment because they're all just like at their house and stuff so think about how can you be that voice Right? How can you be that voice of certainty? And, and ultimately, that's number six right? of these 10, 10 ideas that we're going to be sharing out this week um, for in case you're on quarantine and you need a quarantine market. Appreciate you, Kyle. So that's it, right? So number one, just a quick quick recap. Number one was connection. Number two was um, attention. People are craving, craving connection. They're not getting that one human connection they usually get in their office. They also, um, you're, you have their attention more because people are here hanging out on Facebook and on social media more than they normally would be in their office. Um, also, be entertaining, right? How can you create entertainment? How can you create value and, and be there so that people are tuning in to what you're talking about and ultimately they can see your commercials whenever you're promoting commercials as well, right? So like, for example, if you're digging this content, you should check out oneagentaway.com because we do all this kind of stuff inside the Legion of Loan Officers and it would be my honor to show you how I can help you get results like some of these other people where I talked to Gian, he made $100,000 since he joined the Legion of Loan Officers in July, right? So pretty good deal to pay like less than one hand worth of money and go make a bunch of hands worth of money, you know what I'm saying? So how can you create certainty? Okay, the other ones today were omnipresent. So how can you be omnipresent by being at least making one post per day on the organic side, on the free, on your profile, and then also by having the Cerberus guard dog method in place and shooting three one minute videos, launching those out $1 per day to all your retargeting audiences so that you stay relevant once people have raised their hand or shown any kind of interest in what you're talking about. Now you can consistently be relevant and be there inside of the, inside of the newsfeed. And then also getting the reviews online because people trust reviews today. It's the Amazon effect, right? So when you go to Amazon and you see, oh, everybody else bought the same thing or oh, they bought this and this thing, or instead of this, they bought this, right? You can see all that stuff on Amazon. They've trained us to even look for that. So now you can, um, you know, you can take that same effect 
and just know that it exists in the world and how can you leverage it for your own business? It's by having clients telling other clients that you're amazing, right? That's the way to use the Amazon effect in your mortgage business or your real estate business or insurance or whatever it is that you're doing today. And then number six is providing certainty. There's a lot of uncertainty happening right this second and you can be a voice of certainty, a voice of reason by taking in all the information and then pushing it back out in a way that makes sense, that is in language that is normal uh, speak, that your, your network can understand exactly what you're saying, okay? And not when some mortgage, real estate, fancy lingo, but just say it in a way that just break it down into really normal, simple language, okay? So that's, uh, that's the six, the six uh, you know, one through six for so far. And a comeback, I've got four more ideas that we're going to be sharing with you for the rest of the week. I might, I might have to come up with a couple of more, I guess, if I need to have like two or three per day. So we'll see what's up. But I, I wrote down 10 initially on my list over here, and we'll just continue rocking that out. So if you like this, please drop me a comment. Um, drop a hashtag live, hashtag replay. And if you drop a comment that actually you know is meaningful or a question, I'm going to pick one person that leaves a meaningful comment, and I'm going to send them the book, the book pack with the Loan Officer Official Strategy Guide and the nine figure blueprint both of these are on amazon we're going to send one of those out to somebody today just like we did yesterday and uh, feel free to share this video if you think it's valuable and other people in your network would find value from it that'd be awesome hope you guys are doing great let me know how i can help you peace out